Good morning, everybody. How are you today? Is everybody good? good? Okay, we're good. We got some enthusiastic goods out there, but mostly they're from Joe, but <laughs> so Joe's good. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's my favorite when it's all me because this is my favorite part of leading worship is the, the talking and reading part. I'm so good at it. <laughs> right. All of you guys tuning in at home online, thank you for uh, coming to church with us today. I'm going to do our call to worship, and uh, then after that, if you'd please stand, and we will uh, we'll sing. There you go. Stand now. Energy. Yes. Come. Come and worship. You who woke early and you who slept late. You who come often and you who don't. Whether we are first or last or somewhere in between, there is room for all of us in God's kingdom and more than enough grace to go around. Let's worship God together. Love never changes 
Thank you for singing with me. You're good. You're good. All right, you can grab a seat. Welcome to Crossroads. My name's Joe. Thanks if you're joining us in the room or uh, at home. We've got a few announcements to get you... Uh, to get you knowing what's going on around here. So Bible study is going to be 7 p.m. on Zoom. A lot of our Wednesday morning people are showing up at 7 o'clock on Zoom. So we're going to do the, we're going to do the, um, you know, just the Wednesday night. And that's been working with people in the room and people at home. So you can, you know, you can connect both ways. Grief Share, you can go to the Crossroads website, ecrossroads.net, to get information about that. That's for people who have lost a loved one, and that will be on Thursday nights. And then Kids Ministry is going ahead with Trunk or Treat on Saturday, October 31st. We're going to have some, you know, like some guidelines coming out for that, so you know how to, you know how to get that set up so the kids can have some fun. And Dave, if I could get the next one, that'd be great. Yep. And as we take our offering, we reflect on the words of Scripture. So today we read this. I thank my God every time I remember of you and all my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel. And if you've been around the last few weeks, we've been talking about our partnership in the gospel. So we're part, you know, we have a partnership in the gospel with places like Renewed Hope Counseling Center and Active Faith and Capernaum Health Clinic. And we all know that this year those groups have had to cancel fundraisers, including fundraisers that we were going to host for them here or, you know, by doing Pumpkin Fest uh, downtown and doing our pumpkin bowling, which we all, you know, we always have fun with and raise money for Capernaum with. So we've got a different fundraiser this year. Instead of getting 100, 200 people together and running a race, we're going to do a 50K where just a couple of us are going to run 31 miles, and we're asking people to support that effort. And what, you know, I thank my God every time I think of you. Because do you know that basically when we get 80 to 90 people together and we do, we do a walk, we, we raise between like $3,500 and $4,000. It's a big deal. You know how much we raise right now through just having a couple people go? We're over 3,500 bucks. So, I, and, and I got it. I didn't check it this morning. I should have checked it this morning. It, 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 it's been ticking up. So, all those agencies now are going to be able to, that makes up for the dinner theater, that more than makes up for Pumpkin Fest, and we're going to be able to distribute those funds to those groups so that they can keep going. So, thank you for that. If you want to contribute, you just go to the website. It just says, I think it says support 50K. You click on that, and then there's a little form you can fill out. And then after you fill it out, within a day or two, you'll get an email that tells you how you can complete, can complete your pledge. All right. Hey, last week, I, you know, it's important. Uh, sometimes I got to say I'm sorry, right? That's just how life works. So last week, as we were up here, as I was up here, and I was rushing through some things, you know, the president was in the hospital last week when I was standing up here, and during our usual prayer time, I didn't offer, I didn't offer a prayer for the president. That was wrong of me, and I'm, I'm sorry. I should always do that. And as, you know, we, we, look, at this, we look at this past week, it's just, it's just a good reminder what the church's role is in the political process. It, it's not to disengage, but it's to engage by elevating the conversation. And, and calling people to their better angels and calling people to better places. So let me, let me offer the prayer that I should have offered last week and offer another one for, for, our, for our country in general. If you join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you. We just pray your continued healing for the president and, not, and for him, but not just him, but for everybody who is struggling through COVID right now. And we know that's many people in our country. So let your healing touch be upon them as individuals, but let your healing touch be upon our nation. And what may, may you just bring us back to that place where we recognize that these public servants, they're just people like us. 
and they need our prayers and they need our encouragement. And help us always, always, always to put our hope in you. In you alone, because you will guide us from this place. You will lead us from this place. And we stick with you because where else can we go? You have the words of eternal life. So give us the courage to stick with you even through these difficult times. In Jesus' holy name we pray it. All God's people said, amen. All right. That's a good, that's a good song title to go for the next one. All right. So God, help us to be, right? Let's, stay, let's walk close to Jesus so that we can bring that love into, into our world right now. Would you rise and lift your voices and join the team? Yeah, so before we sing this, this is a beautiful song. And in the middle of it, it goes, I, I don't think we've done that a lot here, so I think it's probably fairly new to you guys, but it says, hallelujah, 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 amen. That's my favorite part of the song. So what I'm hoping is that we can fill this room up with, with that part right there because it's a beautiful song and it's really beautiful when we all sing it together and we we just fill this room up and we're all in the moment feeling it at the same time God help me to
It was beautiful up here. I hope you guys heard it out there. Would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you. Just come, Lord Jesus, come. Be in our midst, guide us and lead us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, we got, we got Pastor Phil today. You can grab a seat. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh, I just got to undo everything. Sorry. We will start with a scripture reading. Joe, would you mind? I do not. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you, he asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you're asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with. But to sit at my right or my left is not for me to grant. Those places to belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Amen. Word of the Lord. Thanks. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this place and this time. We just ask that, uh, that my words do not get in the way. Just help us. Help us understand. Help us grow. And again, we thank you for the Lord, the things that you give us and the things that you take away. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So today's scripture reading talks of several things. We, we're given a, a writing uh, from Mark. Now, Mark writes this, and he writes it in such a way that he's being dictated by Peter. Peter is illiterate. He doesn't know how to write or read. And he uh, gets Mark to do these things for him. So, so these are the dictations, technically, of Peter. And there grows a community in that because it's not just the dictations of, of Peter, but Paul, the apostle, is, knows who Mark is. So there's some influence there. And this story is unique in the fact that Mark lays this similar pattern that happens three times throughout his gospel. In his gospel writings, we see very evenly about how the disciples have a thought and then Jesus has a response. And most of the time, we look at these men wondering like, what the heck are they seeing? And we see uh, very easily like, we have 20-20 vision. Uh, we, we can step back from the story and we get it all. We see the whole spectrum. And, and sometimes we're a little critical of these guys. Sometimes we're like, you know, these, these guys, do they, do they understand? Like, Jesus is telling them, hey, you know, I'm going to die. And, and they're like, but yeah, that's cool. When you come into power, though, I, I, I'm wondering what I can get out of this. Um, and, and sometimes we think to ourselves, like, we step back and we're just, we don't, we, we recognize very clearly John and James, the Zebedee brothers, that, that they're very interested in a title. Um, when I graduated uh, from Tyndale College, that doesn't exist anymore because it closed down, but it was a Christian college, but something happened with embezzlement. Thank you, Dave. Um, <laughs> the one thing they gave me is they gave me, this, they gave me this towel. Now, I think it's probably the only thing out of that education that's, that's lasted. Um, <laughs> But, but that towel that they gave me, uh, they told us that 
remember our calling. Uh, remember that it's not always about titles, but it's about towels. Um, and, and sometimes when I remember this towel and I remember what these men are asking for, sometimes I, do, I am a little more critical than what I need to be. Um, they're not asking for anything different than what they understood at the time period. Um, I think I'm going to do this right. Did I? Nope. How do I get the slides to work? I can't read, so I'm guessing. Oh, there we go. Oh, wait. That was... Did I go backwards, Dave? Yep, there we go. Don't worry, I'm a master of technology. Um, so we look at the Zebedee brothers, and, and we, we often understand that they're a product of their time. The Roman government uh, works as a hierarchy. They understood a hierarchy. When Jesus said that, that he was the king, that he was empowered by God, they recognized it. They were with him, so they saw the power that he produced. They saw the energy that he could command with just his voice, the people that were drawn to him. So they recognized a leader. They also recognized a leader that met common needs, whether it was feeding the multitudes, whether it was healing the sick. They saw a leader and they watched him work. And in that, they looked around and they saw what would happen here and now in this physical place. And they wanted to be in on it. And they understood how things worked in the time. And there's a unique term that they use, uh, which one will sit at your right hand and which one will sit at your left hand. Which one will be the master of law and who will command an army? And those are two prominent positions. And we often think about those titles. And they're good titles. And you know what? Titles aren't bad. I'm not talking down about titles. Titles are necessary. We sometimes need titles to know what to do or what not to say around certain people. <laughs> your grandmother has a title of grandmother. And you wouldn't say certain things around your grandmother. Unless she was my grandmother, she would say lots of things around you. <laughs> but we would not do certain things around certain titles. When we come in contact with certain titles, we know how to respond. And sometimes, sometimes we, we actually just like those titles. Uh, when I was um, starting in youth ministry back at Tyndale, it was always interesting. Everybody wanted to work at a megachurch. I was an uh, intern at a megachurch, and I will tell you that was the most, um, uh, that was, uh, if you could have a living nightmare, that was it. Um, we, had, we had like, I think, 400 kids in youth group. Um, and it was, it was awesome that they could bring those kids in there. But logistically, it was just a nightmare. It was hard place to work. Um, it, was, it, was, it was insane. And there was good people there, but I don't think I would, I, I would want to go back to that. But there were people that, that their whole point in ministry was just to go to work at a place where they could be seen and heard, but not to serve. So many times, even when we get into ministry, we want the title of pastor. And we forget all the things that come with it. When we were given the title as Christians, sometimes we forgot all the things that came with that title. Um, and that's hard. And, and what's interesting is that James and John, they, they got a glimpse of it and they kind of understand it because, because when Jesus, Jesus is coming, is he doesn't rebuke them, right? This is Peter's writing and Peter knows darn well what a rebuking is. Man's got quite a few of them. 
So, so they know what a rebuking is. He would know how to write it out, and he would want somebody else to get rebuked besides him most of the time. <laughs> Spread the blame. Um, but Jesus doesn't. Jesus says, you know, do you want my baptism? Do you want my cup? Because that I can give you. I can't give you the right or the left. It's not mine to give. But do you want my cup? Do you want my baptism? And they say yes. And then he goes on and he, he gives these connotations. And what I mean by these connotations is he talks of a term that we struggle with, service. Most of the time when we think of servant, service or servant, we think of a lackey, Right? We think of an underling. When I worked in that megachurch, that's all I was. I was not given a first name. I was given a nickname. And I was told to do X. My, I was, on the first day, it was funny. When I came in for orientation, there was like a half a dozen of us. They the guy, the youth pastor, John Short, love that guy. Uh, he's like, you guys no longer have a status here or a name. You're just numbers. And your job is to do whatever I tell you to. And, and that was an eye-opening experience. This is like, what? Really? I was number 14? I probably like that number. Um, and, and we were told to just do, to go and to do. And whatever it was, we did it. And that was the best experience that I understood about service because it no longer was me standing up on a stage or a title but I was reminded why I was getting into ministry. But we don't look at it that way, do we? Sometimes we don't understand there's something nice about, about that, that shiny title. Because with that shiny title, we can have other people do dirty work. But talking to Dave, Dave's funny. He's, he reminds me of so many beautiful things. Dave always tells me these stories about when they were at the school, right, Dave? And they had the bus. They only had the, they only had the, the parsonage out there, and they had to drive this, this U-Haul or a bus with a trailer to all the way there back and forth. And Dave was saying, this would be awesome when we have a building, and I don't have to do this anymore. <laughs> but then halfway between there and here, he, he realized Doing this is doing ministry. And the thing is, is we don't see it that way often. We often struggle with that. We often struggle with that towel. But hindsight is twenty twenty, isn't it? Hindsight does that to us. Um, dang it, I'm going to botch that. When, when Jesus told James to take that cup and to bear that burden, he would be witness to the crucifixion. All 12 would be witness to the crucifixion and what that meant. And I got to wonder what it would be like to be a fly in that room. You know, like be sitting back and being like, oh yeah, that's what he meant. I'm not really too sure about this, guys. What do you think? You know? Like, hmm. But he would serve. Now, he would be the only apostle that would be uh, described in the Bible uh, of his martyrdom. And he would be beheaded in 44. When John said that, yes, he agreed to that, he would then be the only apostle that would that would take up that cup, and that cup would, would be more than enough of painful. He would be boiled in oil, and then when that didn't do it, he would be poisoned. Um, and then he would be banished to Patmos. Uh, he would die of old age uh, at the year 100. And there are questions if that would be right in the date, but, but he took that cup. Now, I don't know... John understood the implied meaning of that towel, of what service would cost, what service would look like. When we look at the 12, 
they all would end up taking it. They all agreed to it. And not one of them isn't martyred. Only John. Say John. But some would be sawn in half. Some would be pulled by horses. Some would be drowned. Some would be hanged. Some would be crucified upside down. They would do it under the guise of Roman understanding, of, of religious conviction. See, now, we talk about this because it would be easy enough at any point in time for them just to say, I recant. Because the, the Roman government, they're perfectly fine with accepting you back into the fold. They just want you to commit to Romatas, which is the Roman religion. They don't really care what you feel in your hearts of hearts. They just care that you do what the Roman idea wants you to do. And at any point in time, Christianity could have been a state religion. They just have to confess. They just have to conform to certain rules. And one of the rules is, is that they cannot be in opposition to the state. But that's a difficulty, isn't it? Because in opposition to the state, it stands against all they believe in. Because they are looking for a higher calling. They are seeking not a God of laurels, but a God of sacrifice. They want a kingdom to come that is holy and good and righteous and very much so against what the Romans want and what the Romans feel. And their towel that they would take up over and over again would be love and mercy. And sometimes it would be paid in blood and sweat and tears. And sometimes we don't really understand that that's what sacrifice is or that's what service is. Uh, when I worked for Habitat for Humanity building houses, it was always funny when we would show up and all the lumber was there and, and the first person would look at me with their shiny tool belt and their hammer and they'd be like, when do we get to lift walls? Well, there's a lot of work that comes before lifting walls. There's a lot of things that come with the term or with the title Christian. One of the things is a towel and that service that comes with it. This is a very simple message. It's a very short message. Joe also told me to keep it short because we have a baptism. Not this, but the next. Um, but that being said, sometimes, sometimes that's hard. For when that title is given to us, that, tie, that towel that we have to hold on to. I'm not keen on titles. I, I like to call myself a minor pastor because I'm not a man for titles. Um, if I could do without it, I would do without it. Uh, but I know it's necessary. But I know the obligation that comes with that title. That when uh, I stand up here before you, I don't stand on my own two legs, but I I stand on better men uh, that have came before me, that uh, give a message of hope, that give a message of, of what it is to carry a towel. I'm going to leave you with this um, before we end. Uh, just a story, uh, a story of, uh, of a charismatic leader. And um, he, was a, he was a strong man, loved dogs, uh, he came into power in 1933. And for everything we saw of him, he was a nice guy that told jokes. And that was, that was, he was funny. He liked kids. And he seemed like an all-around good guy. He was doing things in government that was not done before. He liked a new society. A new, stronger society a society of nationalists. There rose up opposition, and sometimes he would make comments that he was doing this for the good of the people. 
Because, because when Adolf Hitler came into power, he would, he would state uh, that to be a good German was to be a good Lutheran. See, he forgot that title. Uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, uh, he was a pastor? Um, he, was a, he was a pastor, and he stood in opposition of that. He, his towel was to stand in opposition of things that were wrong of hurt and pain, and he died for it. Uh, I believe he was martyred uh, in 1942, correct? Is that about? Joe's much better with uh, ec economists. Uh, I'll Google that day. Yeah, somebody, Ben's the best person for fact-checking me. I find it amazing. Um, but Dietrich Bonhoeffer would die in opposition. He was taking up his towel. He was not so concerned about his title like others before him. Um, our last, our, uh, what it's a call, not call to worship. Um, call to faith. Thank you, Joe. I'm so glad he's here. Uh, our call to faith is um, what will you do with your towel or how will you use your towel? Think, Joe, you should really have him up here. <laughs> how, will you use, how will you use your towel? Um, we call ourselves Christians. Uh, that implies certain things. One of them is our towel. My only question I leave you with is, how will you choose to take it up? May we end in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time and we thank you for this place. Um, I just ask that you just help us. Help us with these simple things. Help us with these simple thoughts. Help us take up our towel. Help us remember what that is to be a servant and to work. We thank you again for this place. We thank you again for this time. We thank you, Lord, for the things that you give us and the things that you take away. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you, Phil. If you'd please rise with us and uh, sing before we go.
crazy thing about our faith that as you become that servant the Lord blesses you and you live a life that you can't even imagine so may the Lord himself bless you and keep you may he be kind and gracious to you may he look upon you with his favor and give you the peace that surpasses all our understanding amen